Welcome back to some Goodbye Volcano. Hi, I'm Dear Darling, and we only have so much time with this world together. Let's make the most of it in what I believe will probably be the final episode of Goodbye Volcano. Hi. Um, so I already actually done all the finale esque stuff with Goodbye Volcano High already. Like I have an Animal Crossing episode already talking about my thoughts um, on the series, etc., etc. In the final episodes of like the first playthrough I had, I talked about that. So go see those ones. I think if you want to see my like final conclusions, etc., etc. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, we get to choose like a different movie. I forgot about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's what I'm, I'm saying. Like, I've, I've said all my thoughts about it already, you know. I'm not going to repeat myself. Instead, I'm going to do the best next possible thing and continue the proof of a four-color theorem from what I remember. <laughs> so last time, if you don't remember, we, we, well, I didn't actually prove it, but I'm just telling you, you can prove it. That in, like in, in every sort of, like, planar, no, maximal planar map, there must be... Um, a vertex of five or fewer edges connected to it. And now our proof is going to be by induction that if we can if we can find a four colouring for all of for all planar maps. So planar maps is the circle and dot things I talked about. I don't actually know if I talked about what they were called. Um, of size K and below. And then we can prove that if that is true and we can prove that we can do it for every k plus one size map then it must be true for all essentially so the way that induction works is you, you start with your base case and your base case is n equals one aka a vertex of one size one that's easy color it done so then you say okay now assume it's true for every single maximal planar map of size n movie. equals k well, and smaller um now imagine now, now we've got to figure out how to color a k plus one Balancing so basically what you do is you take the n equals k plus one map and you find that vertex we proved in the previous lemma of which has uh, five not. edges coming from it or fewer. I don't know if she likes horror, but let's find out. Of five and edges or fewer. Of Pangea, and ultimately hailed as one of the most influential Hold on, we'll horror movies of its time. There's no way the seventh one is the most influential horror movies, all. right? Is Friday the 13th hey really the seventh one that starts? Of course. <laughs> I want it on the record that the movie choice is not my fault. You're no help anyway. <laughs> I do kind of see what's going on with the scene, right? Said. KPG. I don't know if she's seen like Friday the 13th, so I don't really know how the movie goes. <laughs> Are they eating butter? I oh, know those are probably like Starbursts, fruit cheese, right? <laughs> I love the difference. <laughs> difference of expression. Oh my god! How did you even do that? <laughs> he kicked the bucket so hard. That's a that's a very cute little scene. Oh, that's probably the ones I haven't seen on Naomi. I haven't seen all the movie scenes, right? That's crazy. Um. Anyway. Hey. What was I gonna say? Hey. Oh yeah, okay, so we're doing a proof. Okay, we, we got a K plus one map. We're finding the vertex of um, degree um, of five or fewer, and we're taking it out and being like, okay, let's color that map, which we have left, the size of n equals K, which we is said is true by the inductive step, you know? And now we've got to put in this K plus one step and see if we can color it. So the easy cases is if there's... Fang, what's wrong? Um, if uh, the degree of a vertex, okay, how many other edges were connected to it, is of three or fewer. Because then we have our fourth colour, we can just colour it. Like, if it's coloured red, yellow, green currently, we just colour it blue. So Boom. Done. Sorry, Proven. Okay, but now the edge cases are where it gets more complicated. Where basically, okay, if there's, let me think, if there's, edge ca if there's four edges, four of them together, what you basically do is you create something called Kemp chains. So imagine we have this vertex, and it goes red, yellow, green, blue, and the four adjacent verti vertices next to it um what we want to do is we want to find a chain uh, we, we start with a red one and then select all the green vertices from it right connect to that red one and from all of those green vertices we select all the red ones and we repeat over and over and over again so we can have like a full netting map of red green red green red green red green and basically um if this red green red and we do the same from the green side of um 
th that same green vertex off of our specific vertex point. And the point is, if those two never touch each other, they don't intersect, then what we can do is we can take all those red green vertices on one of the two sides and invert their colors. So instead of going red green, red green, red green, we go green, red green, red green, red. And that way, our vertex, which we um, had before, which used to have red, yellow, green, blue as a coloring all around it, now has green, yellow, green, blue. And we can now color that problematic vertex red. Boom, proven, done. The alternative is if those red, green chains, Kemp chains do connect to each other, then inverting it doesn't matter because then instead of it going red, yellow, green, blue around the problem point, it goes green, yellow, red, blue, which is not what we want. But once we do that, we know they're def so definitively connected. Wrong. We basically try and do a blue, yellow chain coming out from the two remaining it's points. So the yellow blue chain yellow coming out from the yellow point next to the problematic point going yellow blue yellow blue yellow blue and because we have this sort of red green boundary essentially connecting the red and green points we know that yellow blue chain cannot cross it at any point because the yellow blue chain has no colors in common with a red green chain basically that camp chain is trapped within this red green boundary so we can invert its color and thus we can color the fourth point so then now instead of being red yellow green blue it goes like red blue green blue and we color a problematic point yellow boom front. done yeah. okay now the harder point is when mm -hmm. we have vertices no. of five different colors Sucks. and i think those are, there's two different options one of them is if Stella. the repeated what color for example is red well, actually, okay, but there's actually multiple options. If there's three or fewer colors represented in the five oh, vertices, yeah, yeah, then we I'm color here. the problematic vertice, whatever the fourth color is done. But if all four colors are represented, we must have, by the pigeonhole principle, one color repeated. Without loss of generality, we say it's red. Now, where do we go from here? That's oh, a big question. My I think that there's multiple cases. Case number one is basically if the, the repeated color, yeah. the red one, is kind of adjacent. So, for example, it goes red, red, yellow, close. green, blue, if we're going clockwise around the, the problematic point. Um, basically, the proof is exactly the same in this case as it is with the fourth case. We try and draw a chain from yellow to blue, and then if, if a yellow blue Kemp chains don't connect, we invert one of them and then we color it yellow or blue, whichever one is the new one which we can use. And then if they do connect, then we try and draw a red green chain from the green point. And if it's, it's by definition isolated, so we can invert it. Done. The more difficult case is if they're separated. So for example, goes red, yellow, red, green, blue. Um, basically, what you're meant to do is a very similar thing. You try and draw a yellow green Kemp chain. Um, if it doesn't connect to the green point, done, in invert the color, done. If it does connect, then you do a yellow blue Kemp chain. Um, and if it doesn't connect, invert the, the chain color. If it does, you're done. Uh, if, if it doesn't, uh, then you're done. If it does, then the final thing you do is you do a red, from the left red point, you do a red green camp chain. And from the right red point, you try and do a red blue camp chain. If, and it's like they both can't connect. Oh, so you probably don't need to both of them. You only do one of them. They, by definition, can't overlap so you invert the color and then boom you're done and then boom that's it you prove a four, four color theorem you've proved in every single k plus one case you can color that problematic point providing you can color you have a, a coloration for the n equals k case and lower and thus by induction strong induction you have proven God. that you can I, I, four color the map I mean, q e d hey, now Here's a sneaky part. The mathematicians along among you have probably been like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not how they prove a full color film. And you're absolutely right. I pranked you. That wasn't the proof of full color film because that proof is wrong. What? I know, right? <laughs> Basically, the, the proof simplified is there's a problematic edge case in that final edge case I described where the, the two repeated red colors separated. But basically, it's like the yellow green chain and the yellow blue chain can actually share um, a yellow point in each of them. Oh, actually, you do need to draw like a red, green, and red, blue chain, right? Because then you need to invert both of them, I think. Because you need to colour the red ones, both to green and blue, to colour the final point red. Sorry, minor correction to the fake proof. But basically, the yellow, green chain and the yellow, blue, camp chain, you can draw um, in that final edge case, can actually overlap each other. They can share a yellow thing and they can cross, basically, through that. So, like, imagine, like, if we have a yellow point going upwards, then to the... And then we have, uh, so, okay, going clockwise around our problematic point, we have red, yellow, red, green, blue. Um, imagine going up from the yellow chain, we have, we, we go to the left with green, and then we come back to the middle with yellow, and to the right we go 
from that original yellow point would go blue to the right and then yellow back to the middle and then they continue out with the chemtrains oh, going around okay. outwards again they share a yellow point which means that if you try and invert that yellow green hey. chemtrain um what was previously a yellow point was now it's green and then when you try and invert the yellow blue one it, you you can't anymore essentially it, it's something like that no sorry that's not the thing the thing is i got it wrong again the, they can share a point like that we have, we have the two yellows but the thing is those green and blue points which we had we were talking about before those intermediate hey. between the Love. adjacent yellow point I and the one so step away funny. two steps away yellow point my can be connected because pleasure. they're different colors so if you invert the two chemp chains colors plastic. that means you've now connected two yellow vertices together thus that is a contradiction this proof no longer works and it turns out this proof just like can't actually hold Thank up you, you like I, people I, have not found a way to make it apply to all general cases which is crazy because I remember the first time I was in my university lecture for doing this. Um, yep, I rigged it. Um, hey, yeah, when, when I was in my university lecture the first time, um, he basically got us like he spent the entire hour getting us to do walk through this proof or whatever at the end, and he just drops at the end. And by the way, this proof is wrong, and we all just went what. <laughs> And yeah, it, it's it's fascinating because it seems like such a rigorous proof. And what makes it such an interesting story in the mathematics yeah. world is it actually stood as a valid Here, proof for a while, One more for like maybe world. like a decade or something. I, I can't remember exactly how long it was until they decide, until someone discovered, hey, there's a false uh, falsity in this proof. It's not real. It doesn't actually hold up. And that, it blows my mind because it's it's such a cool like story behind it in the first place. And what's even cooler Wait. is the way they ended up proving how the four column works in first place. The, the super TLDR is basically they use something called reducible graphs, which is basically like, oh, if graphs graphs of this type are fundamentally similar to graphs of this type, which have fewer vertices and edges. And they basically were like, okay, if they managed to get like all finite planar graphs Hello? reduced down to a certain a to a certain subset of like a thousand right subgraphs, like or so. And they basically we're like, if we can prove each of these are four colorable, then that means all graphs are four colorable. And it's the first proof, I believe, which used extensively computer programming, I suppose, to prove it. It was proved by computers. It wasn't proved by humans. The humans didn't sit down and cut four color every single graph. They basically ran it through an algorithm on computer and the computer went, yep, you can do it. Because it's much more manageable. Like some of these reducible graphs are probably huge. Um, but not they're not all like made up of like 12 different vertices they're, they're probably like in the hundreds or something i don't actually know and it caused a lot of controversy as i understand it in the mass world uh, for a long time because it was sort of like whoa you know how can we really trust that the, the computers are like doing it properly what if it's like a, a fault with the programming or something like that like are we really expected to uh, approve the veracity of this um, nowadays, of course, computers are very much used hand in hand, I suppose, with mathematical discoveries. But obviously, being new technology at the time, people are much more reluctant, I think, to pick it up to accept it as part of like a, a, a solid foundation for a valid proof, which is understandable. It's new technology at the time. It's not always fully understood and that sort of thing. But what a fascinating story behind the four color theorem, no? <laughs> that's, that's why I love it so much, I suppose. Um, the, bit, the best reason I love a full color theorem is because it's a theorem which is so easily explained to a layperson who doesn't know anything about maps, you know? The full color theorem is basically, I can give you a map, how many colored pencils do you need to color every single country in such that no two countries which border each other share the same color? <laughs> That's basically what it's asking and the answer is four. And it's like easy to test, like you can very easily get people to come up with contradictions which meet for show that one two and three is impossible but it's so hard to prove that four is the minimum you know and then it's got all this story behind it at the same time i hope you enjoyed i hope you enjoyed the story as much as i enjoyed telling it i, I probably got like quite a few of the details wrong so i apologize but that's a sort of my vague memory and understanding i have of it as a simplified version for if you don't know much maths then hopefully you could sort of follow along probably not because like I have no diagrams to show you and it's a very visual um, proof I think in first place so basically the TLDR of it is um, there was a proof which was long standing for ages until not not for ages ages I, I still think it was only like a five to ten years or something it was standing for until someone found a contradiction with it <laughs> but it just it's ingrained in me the way I learned it because I spent that entire like 
hour of that lecture to be like, oh, this is how we prove a full color theorem. Well, what a fascinating proof. What a clever idea which goes around it. I love graph theory. Graph theory is so cool. I would just want the university lecturer to invert it on me and be like, hey, this is all completely wrong. <laughs> well, not all completely wrong. This step is completely wrong, which invalidates everything that you've done. And then the actual proof, I can't even show you because it uses a computer, basically. <laughs> it's so cool. In the most fascinating way possible. Anyway, graph theory is awesome. And I also love this part of Goodbye Volcano High, the, the concept of like, here all the memories we'll never get to make because the world is ending. <laughs> this is probably my favourite part of Goodbye Volcano High. The memory montage of the things which can never be. It, it's heartbreaking in, the, in one of the most beautiful ways, I suppose. Um, Yes, I, I didn't expect to go on such a huge mathematical tangent, I think, in Goodbye Volcano High. I also feel like I spoke at a million miles per hour, so that was probably incredibly difficult to follow. But I was actually just kind of, I was basically just kind of worried I wouldn't be able to get the entire explanation of proof down. Okay, so let's, whoop, mental reset there, darling. Back to a much more measured, slower talking pace that people can keep up with. It's always actually the thing where... If you don't do a lot of public speaking, not that I do, but I've done a reasonable amount of speaking, like um, to a, in a sort of public sense, um, but you actually need to speak a lot slower than you realise, because you 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 can keep up with your thoughts and what you're saying much easier than someone else can, hearing it for the first time. And I think it's sort of compounded by the fact I talk about this quite a few times in Animal Crossing. But I tend to watch things on double speed. Um, so I'm sure I basically picked up that way of speaking more than any other way. Which is, I'm sure, not helpful to the fact of me speaking too fast. So I've got to make sure that I slow down my speech, you know. Make sure that you can actually follow along with what's what I'm saying. I will say though, that I think most people just have me on as sort of like background noise. Which is perfectly fine as well. In which case, I think the double double speed type of talk is fine. Befitting, almost. And here we go, the world is ending. Credits roll. Thank you. <laughs> As we still have a few minutes. I need to, like, turn the light the on next my song room. It's, like, so dark right now. It's about going home. Sorry, I just, I didn't want to spend the rest of <laughs> this episode just in pitch black darkness, essentially. It's only 5pm right now, but it is winter time, so um, in the infamous words of, not not really infamous words, but in the words of um, a song which I used to sing back in primary school. The days are getting much shorter, the nights are drawing in. And the air is getting much colder, now autumn time has come again. Oh, it's actually like winter, <laughs> but still. Um, yeah, goodbye Volcano High. I Honestly, I enjoyed my time with it. I love the background designs in it. The character designs are fascinating. The fact that every single background character has a unique design is still the most insane part, I think, of this game. Um, I think story-wise, it has its ups and downs. Um, character, you know, development-wise as well, pacing is like off at some points. But I like the concept of basically what's going on. You know? But what more can I say? If I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Will you enjoy it? Well, that's a question up for you. It depends how much you can stomach teen drama, is basically my thoughts on this. If you're fine with teen drama, then I think you'll be fine with Goodbye Valkyrie High. If you hate teen drama, then you should not play this game, <laughs> is my thoughts on it. But I, I think it was a nice time. Um, so I apologise, didn't see Rose's scene or whatever Naomi scene I'm missing, which I'm guessing I'm guessing it must be the movie scene, but I, I genuinely don't know what other scenes I could be missing. Uh, 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 other characters are goofing off. Twenty-seven points at the end of episode five. Brand new infinite, but you obviously have to do so in one place for a romance, but I'm not just opening the for the affinity payout in episode 5. I'm still surprised I'm missing a dialogue thing when I'm I don't know what I've missed though. Goodbye, Volcano Hi. Is that like an album? So I can see all the photos I've missed. 
Um, I'm assuming it's a uh, uh, Rose's photo. I've definitely missed. I don't know if my Steam thing tracks how many I've missed. I'm not called photos, and it hasn't said so. Pretty here. I don't know what extra content I've missed of my is a thing. Goodbye, Volcano High Extra Content Naomi. Pretty Hit Rose. Unlock Naomi's flashback. In episode 2, do not sit with Trish and Rose out of, his, out of the auditorium. Oh! That's the one I've missed. Because I think every time I've sat down. Because, oh, yeah, because of my first playthrough, I sat down because it was just normal. The second playthrough, I sat down because I was trying to do Trisha's path. And the third one I did because I was trying to do, Ro thinking I could do Rose's path. Oh. It's a shame. If we could do Naomi and Rose's thing in one playthrough, I would. I don't think you can, though. It's kind of closer because apparently Naomi has like an excess amount of points that you can have. But Roses, you basically need to almost get every single point. Let's see, yeah, because you have to go to the library. And, no, you have to go to the temple. Four points on Naomi. And I don't think you can. <laughs> you can't do roses anyway without it. So there you go. I mean, we got most of the, the character stuff done. I'm surprised that's all extra content with Sage, but Naomi's is technically almost done. We just didn't sit down. Oh, I should just let this roll, you know? It's a, it's a final episode of Goodbye Volcano High. I don't know what else to say about this, to be perfectly honest. Uh, again, everything I've... I could think thought wise has been said before like or i've spoken about it before so do check out previous episodes like i'm, I'm telling you the goodbye volcano high animal crossing episode and probably whatever episode was before the one where it's i call it trish's path or whatever whatever episode number is before trish's path you should go watch those ones to probably see my actual more broken down thoughts i think of goodbye volcano high because right now i'm just sort of like vibing you know just chilling. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's a fun enough time. What other guides are there? I don't know. Is there anything more interesting to see? All photos guide? So I think the only photo we're missing is must be Rose's campfire photo. I'm, I'm kind of shocked that we played through three times. With all three sessions of LNL, and we never got a natural 20 or a natural 1 for the achievement. I know it's, you know, RNG by definition. Should we see how many rolls it takes for me to get a natural 20 or natural 1 right now? I have some D&D &D dice in my drawer somewhere. Not this drawer. This drawer, I think. Yeah, here we go. I've got a nice little, like, dragon bag I bought off Etsy for it. And I've got, I've got four sets of dice in here, which is definitely too many dice, considering the fact that I haven't played D&D &D for ages, but here we go. D20. Let's see. Okay, roll one, 14. Roll two, 20. There you go. It's just that easy. Natural 20. But I couldn't do it in-game, so... What does it really matter if I don't get the achievement, you know? Actually, it'll be exciting. I can actually use those dice again soon. <laughs> Um, I think the music is actually quite a nice thing in Goodbye Volcano High. I don't know if I spoke about that all too much, but the music is sort of up my alley, is what I'd say. I vibe out with this. I can chillax with this. I can relax with this. I can be cool with it. <laughs> cool hip with it. Taka 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 taka. I don't even know where that's from. I only heard, heard Northern Night say it multiple times. So I'm sort of just parroting him. Um, but yeah, what, what else to say? Um, well, I, I suppose, if anything, thank you for coming along on this journey. Um, if you're disappointed that, you know, I'm, I'm not playing like Snoop Game, I'm, I'm not seeing all the other routes in Goodbye Volcano High, I didn't make the choices, and, you know, I made, I was too lackadaisical 
towards the end of it. I, I apologise, but at the end of the day, I'm basically playing how I want to play. Um, I still hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. All that sort of thing, you know. It, if you have been here, if you've made it all this way, I suppose, you know, let me know your favourite character, your favourite moment, whatever you want. Etc, etc. Did you go buy this game yourself? Did you play it? Do you not like it? I don't know. Just be civil, you know. Be kind to each other. <laughs> be nice in the comments if you if you do, uh, do say. But otherwise, I suppose I will see you on whatever our next series is, which is following on from Goodbye Volcano High. Um, it'd be an interesting one, I think. It's one that I'm excited to play, certainly, as well. Um, and I hope you all enjoy it as well. And if you don't join me on it, then I suppose you can go watch any of the Let's Plays I've, I've done currently. I've, I've been on so many journeys now. But we'll round this series off, I think, for the final time. That if you have been watching, thank you very much. This has been Goodbye Volcano. Hi, I've been Dear Darling. Likes, comments, subscription, shares are greatly appreciated. Socials, Discord down below. And I hope we can see each other again in our next journey. But for now, and our final time, it's our farewell. So... Until our next story, bye-bye for now.